What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be doing a range test of the Altel Evo 2. I've got the 8K mounted here on this drone, but remember, this drone has three different cameras. They all use the same airframe, so if you've got the Pro or the Thermal version, then this video is going to be applicable to you. Now, we're here in Maniung, just outside of Philadelphia. We're technically in Balakinwood, and we're going to be flying down the Schuylkill River, so the cool thing about this video is this will be a real-world range test. So I'm here where there's interference everywhere. I'm not out in the middle of nowhere where there's no interference. So we're going to see exactly what you're going to get and what you can expect out of this drone in terms of range. So without wasting any more time. Put the drone up in the air. We'll head up to about, I would say, 300 feet, then head down the river. We're in ludicrous mode, 45 miles an hour. We'll start pushing down. Um, now, I've done this same exact test with the Mavic Air, the Mavic Mini, the Spark, the Mavic 2, the original Mavic Pro. Uh, so I'm gonna put those distances up on the screen just so you guys can get an understanding of how this drone stacks up amongst some of the other competition. Now, although this is a range test, there's some other things I'm looking to find out from this video. The first of which is how this uh, image transmission stacks up as we're flying down the river. So when we get out to a mile or two miles, is it going to break up? Uh, also, this drone goes nine kilometers or 5.6 miles. So obviously we'll put that to the test, see if we can actually get 5.6 miles. And the final thing I'd like to test out here is exactly how the battery life stacks up, right? So we started with about 85%. I took this drone up for a test flight really quickly. So let's think about exactly how much we land with the battery percentage because this drone can fly for an estimated 40 minutes which is just insane so this will give us a good understanding of how far we can go and once we get back how much battery life we have so we're coming up on the mile mark here we've got 4300 feet um, I'm not recording any video, but I am doing a screen recording for you guys to look off of. I figure a screen recording in this instance is better to look off of just because you guys will be able to see like the speed I'm going at. You'll be able to see the distance, the height, all that jazz. Um, so right now it's saying we've got about 15 minutes left. We're at about a mile. We're at 78%. So about a mile of flight took down 6-7%. I'm beginning to get some errors, or not errors, but some warnings saying that the video signal is weak, although I'm looking at the signal strength, the GPS, we're still strong at five bars. So we're gonna take this dog leg down the river. I had a question in my last video, the uh, first flight video that I did, uh, regarding the map. People were saying, where's the map at? Well, if you look in the top left corner right now, um, there's kind of like a displayed or a preview version of the map it's kind of tucked out of the way, but if we go and tap on that, it comes out. So we can see the map from there. We can go full screen if we want to, but I'm gonna to continue to look at this and we'll keep the map up there just for good measures. So we're out at about 8,600 feet right now, about a mile and a half out. Starting to get a little bit of video signal break up here, although it's coming in and out. Um, but in terms of the signal strength, we are still running strong. We've got five bars. I'm looking at that down on my controller. If we tap on the telemetry there, that'll I'll move the histogram. Sorry, there's so much stuff on this app. That'll give you guys a good understanding of what we've got in terms of satellites, in terms of remote controller connection. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how far I got in this testing scenario with the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, but I have a feeling that we've actually surpassed the distance that we got with the Mavic 2 Pro. So it looks like the video signal. Okay, video signal and the aircraft have disconnected. So right now, we are at 10,000 feet. I'll put the mile conversion up on the screen there as well as the metric conversion into kilometers. So the controller disconnected. It's now engaging the return to home sequence. I've got my return to home set to about 400 feet, I believe, just so I'm up clear of anything that I could potentially run into. So now it's just a guessing game, not really a guessing game, but a waiting game until we can reconnect to this drone We'll see exactly how long it takes to reconnect. Um, I know that with DJI drones, they're so reliable when you have to use that return to home function. I've used drones in the past like the Skydio where return to home or what they call return to launch is, I would say a little finicky, uh, but I'll tell from what I've seen, from what I've tested out with this drone so far, the return to home works really well. So I think that we were on about 70% battery life. 
So imagine about two miles takes down about 15% of battery. This drone is going to be able to fly for a really long time. It's got a massive 7,100 milliamp hour battery. So what I'm going to do is let this connect. I'm going to do a little fast forward here so you guys don't have to sit around and wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. We've reconnected here. So the drone is coming back. It reconnected at about 7,600 feet away. The drone is still returning to home on its own. We are at 63% battery left. The drone is flying back at 402 feet. I'm going to take over here. So let's see. We will cancel the return to home. I thought I canceled it at least. All right, so despite hitting the return to home button, it's not letting me take control. So this is weird. I guess because I engage return to home automatically because the controller disconnected, it's just assuming that I don't want control over the sticks. Uh, and also when I hold go home, it's engaging go home. So let's see. We'll hold go home. Now it's saying returning to home. All right, so this is a little bit worrisome that I don't have direct control over the drone. It's also not letting me get out. This is always very interesting with the new drone trying to work out the different kinks. Okay, all right. We got control back over the drone. Um, that was a little bit weird, so let's get back over the river. It just says hovering now. Okay, so I'm really not sure why I wasn't able to get control over the drone. Um, I love doing things live like this because while, while things can go wrong and while it's always hard to talk during those things that are going wrong, it's always really interesting to share with you guys just so you can understand what this drone is about. So we're coming back now. Let's see. Our percentage is at 55%. So if I wanted to, I could probably do that flight all over again, get 10,000 feet down the river. Now, while Altel says that this drone can fly 9 kilometers or 5.6 miles, you've got to understand that they always say those things as if they were done in the best conditions possible. So when they're doing a range test, it could be out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of like the desert, maybe going over the beach and flying out over the water. That's where you're going to get 9 kilometers or 5.6 miles. But in a scenario like this where you've got businesses and homes on either side of the river here that have Wi-Fi routers that are emitting some sort of signal, you are going to get interference and it's to be expected. Now, 10,000 feet, even though that's nowhere close to 5.6 miles, it's still good in my opinion. How often do you need to fly more than 10,000 feet away? Again, in this range test, not only did I want to see that maximum range that we can get to, but I also wanted to test out the battery life, which we've still got 51%. That's incredible. I also wanted to see exactly how the video feed and the transmission system would handle going that far. So the good thing is the transmission system as well as the remote controller disconnected at the same exact time. So it's not like that transmission system is going to cut out before you fly, say, 1,000 feet or 2,000 feet. I have some drones and I've tested some drones where you fly them around and the video signal will conk out and you're not going to be able to see exactly what the drone is doing but the telemetry still update be the telemetry still updates because you're able to still fly the drone so with this the video transmission and the actual signal strength is going to be reliant on each other and you'll know that once you lose signal you've also lost control of the drone which you can look at it as if that's a good thing or a bad thing but regardless I'm definitely happy that the video feed was able to hold up as well as it did, especially in an urban environment like this one. So now we are coming back down. I had this in ludicrous mode, and you know what? There is a headwind that I've been fighting coming back. The wind is headed down the river here. 
All right, so guys, that wraps up this video pretty much. I was going to wait until I land the drone, but that's probably going to be another two minutes, and I don't want to waste all of your time. So again, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of this range test, and let me know what you think of the results that we found here. Again, really impressed with 10,000 feet, and I'm also really impressed with the transmission signal that was coming back and how clear it was coming through the actual mobile device. Also, there wasn't a lot of latency, which is good to note. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.